Hey guys, how's it going? Hello, hello. Hey, Eric and Lisa. Hey, Gloria, Helen, Laurie. <clears throat> Good to see you guys on here today. I'm just setting us up, getting us live on Facebook. We're going to do another um, big Q&A show today. So, because uh, we're getting in a bunch of questions. <laughs> so we thought we'd address them. We had a bunch of questions yesterday, last week, sorry, not yesterday, that we didn't get to. So we thought we would um, address some of those. So if you guys have questions while you are jumping on here, um, have a think about them. Nothing's off the table. Uh, feel free to just chuck them in the chat there. Um, while I just get this set up. So give me a couple minutes here while you guys think about uh, some of your questions as well. Awesome. All right. I think we are, I think we are live everywhere, which is awesome. Um, great. If you're just joining us from Facebook to uh, welcome. Hello. And uh, I'm going to be answering some, oh, that's a great question. Yes. Thanks, Eric and Lisa. I'll add that one to the list. Um, yeah, we're answering questions tonight. We had a bunch last week that we didn't get to. So we're answering those questions, plus any more questions that you have. So feel free to start putting them in the chat. Um, you can put them under in uh, Facebook and um, we will get to those as well. So um, you can start having a think about those questions. Um, also, if you haven't already, we would so appreciate it if you would go to your favorite podcast channel and subscribe to our, um, our channel there, uh, the Health Made Simple show, uh, subscribe, um, you can listen to all the past episodes if you've missed any or you want to go back and um, check out some of the info, so make sure that you go back and do that. Dr. Bart, hello. Greetings. How's it going? It's going great, thank you. I do have a crew around here and they're getting ready for dinner, so we might hear about that in just a moment. <laughs> nice, good to, uh, good to see. You gotta have your crew. Um, all right, well, we are, um, we are live. We're gonna do Q&A today, so should we, uh, should we dive in? Yeah, do we, are we live on Facebook as well? We are. Yeah, then let's let's dive right in. This will be a fun episode. This will be, um, again, see if you can stump me if you can. Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't yeah. say it like that, but then <laughs> we've been trying. We've been trying. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Health Made Simple Show. Uh, to start off, I want to introduce our host, Dr. Bart Precourt, who has been a healthcare provider for over. 20 years practicing a range of modalities, including chiropractic, kinesiology, uh, functional nutrition and supplementation and lab testing all out of his clinic, Balance Health Studio in Seagrove Beach, Florida. He's also the founder of the Health Edge program, which is a cutting edge health program for entrepreneurs and executives wanting to take their health to the next level. Uh, he works with celebrities and athletes all around the world. And uh, so tonight is your chance to stump him with questions. So if you have any questions at all, please put them in the chat. Let us know in Facebook and we will get those. Um, we will ask him those questions. Nothing's off the table. If it's, if it's a, a question you are unsure of asking, we encourage you to go ahead and ask it and see if we can stump Dr. Bart tonight. Yeah, thanks for the intro, Karen. And you know, and it really is um, nothing really is off the table. Um, on a daily basis, I have this opportunity just to, you know, to talk with people. And, you know, Tuesday is one of my clinic days. And the reality is I get questions all day long about you name it. And, and I feel good about that. And I want to, you know, help our audience here tonight. And again, thank you, everyone for, you know, continuously tuning in. And if you're here on Facebook or um, you're here on Zoom, make sure if you're on Zoom, you can put questions right into the chat. And if you're on Facebook, you get to send a question through and then they'll get it over to me. Uh, anyways, when I'm in practice, everything is on the table because 
health is everything. You know, even in my office, you know, uh, I guess I have it, you know, one of my labels is I'm a chiropractor and one is that I'm an acupuncturist. But the truth is that, you know, I'm a healthcare facilitator. And that is that, that part of healthcare is getting lost more and more. Well, I say it's getting lost, but there's also some surging, you know, I feel like we have really, really good, talented people, men and women right now that are starting to embrace this holistic approach functional medicine, functional nutrition, really diving in deep, which means that everything in your body, everything about your health, your lifestyle, your emotions, your relationship, like everything is on the table. So with that being said, again, welcome everyone. Thank you. And if you have something you think you can help me with, awesome. Let's live and get a whirl. <laughs> and then just, just a reminder in, in a night like tonight, I'm going to do my absolute best to, you know, keep it as real and give you as much like feedback as I possibly can, but I never want it to be interpreted as, you know, um, doctor's advice. And it's like this fine line. And Karen, you, I know you understand. And I think most of our listeners understand that too. So I want to be able to continue to give everyone as much as I possibly can, even strategies and, you know, different things to help them level up their health. Leveling up health means that we're never really treating a disease or a symptom, or I'm not acting as your doctor as we go tonight. So I got to kind of say that, and that gives me <laughs> flexibility to just go after it yeah i love it and also if tonight people do want to dive deeper and um be able to come and see you as their doctor because there is only going to be so much we can cover in this show um how do people do that because you work with people all across the country now virtually i do and, it, and it's really simple and it's getting easier and easier and i think it's actually becoming um a better and better way to practice with patients you know and we have a better bond and literally karen we do it just like this so they would call our office and they would literally just set up a time and say, I want to do a consult with Dr. Barr virtually. We set up a time. Um, my staff will then give them in some instructions. You know, we'll email some paperwork if we need lab tests prior, if they have lab results. So it has literally become as easier now than ever has been to do these types of things virtually. So um, easy breezy. Okay, awesome. With that being said, should we dive into the first question? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, awesome. So uh, I have, Dr. Bart, I've tested positive for Epstein-Barr virus. What does this mean and can I do anything about it? Wow. Okay. So out of the gates with a big topic. We're really? going to do the big topic first. Um, all right. So really, th this is, Karen, this is a bigger topic than I think most people really understand, meaning that. So Epstein-Barr is a virus. And reality is, is that 90 to 95 percent of the adults in our country, probably worldwide, at least, and we know the statistics in our country, 90 to 95 percent of the adults in our country test positive for having the Epstein-Barr virus antibodies. That's significant. Like that is real significant because this year, if we learned anything about viruses, that you don't kill a virus. Your goal with the virus is just to literally harness it. We're trying to, you know, neutralize it, but we don't kill viruses. We kill bacteria, but we don't kill viruses. And this becomes really important because Epstein-Barr particularly is a virus that we consider a stealth pathogen, quotation marks here, a stealth pathogen. And there's a lot of them and I'll discuss some of the others in just a moment. A stealth pathogen is a, um, is a type of virus that becomes very, very intelligent. So much so that Karen, that if the if the Epstein Barr you know virus in your body, it can actually start to mimic. This is what's crazy: mimic your white blood cells and literally shape themselves like your white blood cells, so they can fit in the crowd. And your immune system can no longer identify them, so they live within our bodies very, very, very intelligently. So this this fundamentally has created an issue with the healthcare system and this and this in this virus. So. I'll go, I'm going to go as far as saying this since January and I've made an, uh, I made kind of a point to when we test to kind of adding this test on to almost everyone that I test now since January, um, 100% of my adults have tested positive for the Epstein-Barr virus, hundred percent, not, not 90 or 95%, 100% wow. higher than others. And so some people say, well, how do you get this? I never even got it. If you've ever had mono before, especially if you've had like a bad case, you have the Epstein-Barr virus. Yeah, you might be someone like myself or my wife. We've never had mono, but we both test positive for the Epstein-Barr. So I tested mine 
after I had COVID last year and my Epstein-Barr virus antibodies were going through the roof, really what we call over 600, which is through the roof. And yet we had nothing active. But what that means is this. And the reason, so I'm going to bounce all over the place because this is such a big topic. The reason this is such a big deal and we have to address it. And the reason the medical community doesn't have an answer for Epstein-Barr is because there's no medication to go after this. Very much like a virus like we're dealing with with COVID. There's, there's no like one thing that knocks it down. What knocks it down is a strong us. There are some phenomenal, and I'll talk about them in just a moment. There are some, a phenomenal protocol now that we use called a, ste a stealth pathogen protocol that handles things like Epstein-Barr. In the, so again, this virus, it's very, very difficult to test for. And so everyone wants to test for it. And I was telling, listen, you can test for it, but here's the, the biggest factor, Karen, about, and this is for all our listeners. So when I say stealth pathogens, Karen, it includes Epstein-Barr. It includes the herpes simplex. And that could be one or two or any of the others that we've discovered now. I know it's kind of, it's kind of sounds weird. No, you just cut out for a sec. Did it, did, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 back. Yeah, it was weird. Something just came up on my screen there. Anyways, if you have cold sores or you used to have them, you, you have a herpes simplex. That's one of the viruses. So there's herpes, there's that, there's megaloviruses, there's bacteria, there's helmets, there's parasites. A lot of these things we've never even heard of. But as a, you know, as, as a functional nutrition, functional you know, medicine doctor, these are things that we talk about or learn about is all these different types of stealth pathogens. The, the only one we really test for in blood is Epstein-Barr, but it also might be one of the most biggest problematic ones that there is. And here's the problems. If you have Epstein-Barr, Mary, it's, viruses, all they want to do is spread their wings. That's their main objective in life. There's a, vi there's a cell here. There's a cell here. This one has it. This one does. Its goal in life is to get onto this guy. And then onto, it's all its goal is in life. And it's going to happen when we get weak. Like, for example, when we get beat up, when we get stressed, when our adrenals are toast, when we're not well, we're not sleeping well, when we've over-exercised, we over-traveled, you had corona, you had the vid, all of these things create an environment where viruses, these stealth pathogens get to come out and wreak havoc. And the challenge is you could have some really good health habits. So I forget the original question here, but nonetheless, I'm going to keep going with the Epstein bar. Some, some of the real challenges with the fact that it's, it's very difficult to detect and it goes in waves, but I'll tell you who needs to be aware of this. If you have an autoimmune condition, most likely you have a stealth pathogen. So autoimmune conditions happen because your body gets beat up chronically over and over and over again, and then your body develops a response to it. So the Epstein-Barr virus particularly, again, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but one of the reasons it's so hard to detect, Karen, and this for all our listeners, this is everyone that's hearing this, this applies to you, I promise you. For anyone out there that is, man, they, they, they can tell exactly when things went wrong. Seven years ago, 15 years ago, 25 years ago, there was a moment in time. And since then, they haven't been good. They got food poisoned. They got, they got sick. They were in a hospital. They had a surgery. And ever since then, at that point, Aaron, and listen, as a practitioner, I hear it all the time. If we're doing our jobs as really good practitioners and we're taking a really in-depth, you know, detailed history and unraveling when all this stuff really started, you'll find that one spot. If you have that one spot and it's clear in your brain, you had that dental surgery and ever since then, whatever it might be, that's when that pathogen entered your body. That's when that pathogen started to wreak havoc. It was doing its job and jumping from cell to cell. For the people out there that are just chronically beat up, and, and here's one of the big things. I have a lot of people who are in the health, like in the health world, practitioners. I have a lot of people that are like have healthy lifestyles and they just can't get ahead. They're just always just, it's just not adding up. Like they're just not doing as good as they should. That's a stealth pathogen. That means there's viruses, there's parasites, there's helmets, there's a virus somewhere within the body and, that, and it just keeps the body weak. Its job, again, is to keep the body as weak as it possibly can. So what can we do about it? Because obviously, I think you said, usually if you, if you test positive for Epstein-Barr, 
people say there's nothing or, or doctors might say there's nothing that you can do for it or they don't have any medications for it are there things that we can do yeah there absolutely is and i think it even deserves a little bit more education on it because it took me a long time to wrap my brains around my brain around this so let me explain when we do a blood test 99.5 percent of the people out there will test positive for what's called igg antibodies and those tell us that we have long-term antibodies. So like right now, if you are post COVID and you had the vid and you have IgG, it's like thumbs up, you got it for that virus. And those antibodies work for that virus. When it comes to a stealth pathogen, which coronavirus is not a stealth pathogen. When it comes to something like Epstein-Barr and the other ones that I mentioned, they like to lie deep into the tissue. We can't necessarily find them in the blood. So for example, the Epstein-Barr virus loves to bury itself in the liver and in the thyroid gland. Wow. So everyone out there, and ladies hear me closely, if you've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's before, you've got to address the same bar. There's a, there's a high, 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 high likelihood that your Epstein-Barr is one of the root causes of that Hashimoto's, of that thyroid dysfunction. So the, literally that Epstein-Barr virus will it'll literally make its home in your thyroid, make its home in the liver. So clinically, Karen, we'll see all kinds of things. And the big thing about the virus, it's not the virus that is all, always causing all the problem. It's the excretion from the virus is really causing. Yeah, you sound went funny. Oh, wait a second. Yes. All right. So we're back here. Um, it is usually, it is the excretion from the virus that is causing the inflammation. That's what's neuro, that's the toxin in the body. So it's the virus is one thing. We want to neutralize it. We don't have to get rid of it, but when it's active, it's active and it has a toxic release from it. That inflammation is wreaking havoc. That's where things will lead to things like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, all these different things, all these different autoimmune conditions that keep building up. If you've been diagnosed with more than one autoimmune condition, it's time for you to go tackle your, your Epstein-Barr and go tackle your self-pathogens. Now to answer you, what do we do about it? So it's not an easy answer, but I want to give you an answer here. So there are, when I first started say tackling these maybe like 10 or 12 years ago, very difficult, not very successful. And, and really nobody was. And it's taken a little time to really understand the different strategies. And now, quite frankly, I think that it's, it's become relatively easy because it's become so definitive in how we do this. It's a three month protocol that I do. And it literally, so I'll say this just so everyone, if, if anyone's interested, this is when you'd call the office or you'd reach out and you just ask our staff, can I get the stealth pathogen protocol? And again, we're not treating Epstein Barr, we're not treating all these different conditions or diseases, but we are helping your body rid it, rid itself of critters. That's the goal. We're helping you get stronger. And it's a three month protocol, but it's not hard. There's just four different herbs that we use, or four different types of herbs. But here's the trick. Because I said that they're very intelligent, you can't just take the herbs and stay on them for three months. The, the viruses figure it out. They know that. So we got to do what we call a pulse dose. So we have a very specific protocol. You're on for four days and then a different group for 10 days. So two of them for four days, two of them for 10 days. And we cycle through that. And it's very important that we stay on that protocol for an entire a six week cycle. So it's a full three months. But I tell you, my wife and I started this probably two and a half, three years ago. And we're both healthy people. We both have healthy lifestyles. And I will tell you, this has been a difference maker. This it literally has been a difference maker in the sense that, um, you know, I wouldn't have said that most of my career that I've had a strong immune system. I've always battled with my immune system. You know, I grew up in a asthmatic allergies to everything. You know, I grew up like everyone else on sugar for breakfast, sugar for lunch, sugar for dinner, that kind of stuff, you know, milk and cereal, right? Butter and jelly, and then pasta at night, you know, then ice cream after. And so that was de depleting my body for decades. And so my immune system, it took, it, it isn't like my immune system is probably stronger now at 51 than it was at 21 um, because it wasn't doing anything good for it. So it took me a long way to catch up. And for many years, even as, you know, a practicing healthcare provider, it was hard for me to really like say, man, I've got like, I was able to, you know, get ahead of my immune, you know, like get, get ahead of my immune system. Now, all of the other things, 
that you've been to the doctor before for, for things like you have hypothyroidism and that made you tired and made you gain weight. That's part of it. Adrenal fatigue, that's part of it. Digestive disorders, that's part of it. All of these will happen when those pathogens stay within the body. So there's some other simple things too. And I tell you, if everyone ever wants to do deep dive, and this is a little off cup here, but um, I don't know if you've ever heard, Karen, have you ever heard of the medical medium? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's not a doctor or anything like that, but he does some fantastic information and fantastic, like just data. I don't know if that's the right word, but insights on on things like Epstein-Barr. He doesn't actually give a protocol for it, but he does talk about a benefit for it. And we've been applying it. We absolutely love it. And I think it's good for everybody. Cell reduce every day, absolutely every day. You know, on an empty stomach, bring, you know, get a good you know, fresh glass of cell reduce, not just celery. And that those bile salts, they help cleanse out the liver. And again, that's where that Epstein-Barr loves to hide. So anything that helps you clean out is gonna help with these. But we're using very specific herbs here, some that people don't aren't too familiar with. Myrrh, artemisinin, we use some thuja, we use some sarsaparilla. And there's certain blend and certain you know, protocol that we use with these, um, use a little bit of echinacea. Some fantastic herbs, very, very strong adaptogens and the timeness, the timeliness of it is super, super, super important. Okay. So you can get that protocol by reaching out to the office. What about the test? Like if people want to know how to test for Epstein Bar, or what about other stealth pathogens? Can you test for all of them? You can, but I don't even recommend it. Literally, right. Because here's why we could test for them, but you couldn't test for all of them. You would right. cost you too much. And for the same reason that you can't, you rarely will find Epstein Bar in the bloodstream. It's always going to be, you'll find the antibodies because they're circulating around the body, these antibodies trying to find the virus. And when you see them high, because they're going to be like, if, if you've had a recent bout with it, they're going to be high sitting around the floating around the body because they're trying to find that virus. It's hiding in your tissues. It's hiding in your liver. It's hiding in your thyroid gland. And these are constantly just suppressing the human function. So, you know, again, uh, maybe a beauty of, you know, this whole, you know, COVID thing is that people are opening up their eyes that what are viruses? How many different viruses do we have? How many other the pathogens do we have? And this has definitely brought this to light because again, I tell you, if, if everyone cleaned their body out of critters, game changer, like absolute game changer. And really something everybody could do this protocol. Like almost everybody should do it at some stage. Yeah. Absolutely. I can go through all different types of things, like, like parvoviruses and all these different things, walk in the dirt and the different viruses there and the bacteria, the microbiomes, the mycoplasms, the things that we find in the gut, but they came from your feet, like all of these things. I could go through a whole list of them. And, but all of them, that protocol coming back to, you know, even, hey, listen, uh, herpes virus, all, all those guys, like all of them, this same protocol will approach and attack, you know, 99% of them. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of information for that one, but I think it's a good, as you said, it's a good time to go through it. You know, we're talking more about viruses and uh, their effect on the body and, and what we can do about them. Sure. Right now. Karen, to throw in a couple of like auto, autoimmune conditions, we're talking about things like AS, we're talking about MS, we're talking about Crohn's disease, we're talking about Hashimoto's, all the above, because those are the autoimmune conditions. Think about this. We're always told we don't know what causes them. We don't know what they are. And one of the reasons is because we don't have a detection system, but we always know when these started. And for those, for those reasons, we know that there's, if there's compromised tissue, organ, gland system within the body, you bet to believe that the bad guys are headed that way. They're, yeah. they're going to kind of seek that out and go for those guys. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. Now, should we move on to the next question? Let's do it. We've, we've had a bunch of extra ones here. So let's, uh, let's um, run through some of them. Um, have you got any supplement recommendations for high blood pressure? Yeah, I do. So, here, so here's the thing. So a couple of things with high blood pressure. I always want to remember this. Now, one, your heart starts to increase, right? It pumps harder and increases the pressure inside the actual arterial wall. And it does that for one of two reasons. One, well, it's really one reason there's a deficiency. 
So the, the deficiency means this, that you're going to increase the amount of circulation. It's, it thinks that your body parts, your, your tissues, your organs, your glands, your, your legs, it needs more nutrients. So it pumps the heart harder. Now it could be, Karen, so this is where we get to the simplicity of it. We could have too much weight on our body. If we are overweight, your heart has to work harder. So again, coming up with a really good strategy that's realistic for you to little bit by little bit decrease and get back to your ideal weight. It's important. It's life-saving. We would not have a pandemic. And I'm comfortable saying this. We would not have a pandemic if we didn't have obesity, Never mind any of the other conditions, but just obesity by itself. We would not have a pandemic if that was gone. So if you want to get down high blood pressure, here's another one I'm going to talk about. Very few people know about this. So what we want to do with high blood pressure, of course, you want, so number one, obesity. Number two, sleep. No matter what I say about high blood pressure or your doctor says, if your doctors are not recommending reduce your weight and improve your sleep, then we're going backwards. Like you, when you sleep, your body can heal. It recovers, recovers, re, you know, re, rebuild, recovers, uh, rest and digest. So it's so important that we get adequate amount of sleep. But if you're poor sleeping, poor eating, poor thinking, you got a lot of stress, your body needs more nutrients, it needs those minerals and vitamins all through the body, and it just runs out of them. All right. So let's assume you're doing those two better. And you just want to literally say, Dr. Barr, is there a good supplement out there that lowers blood pressure naturally? And there is. There's something called vitamin G. Oh, People always look at me and say, what is vitamin G? Vitamin yeah. G is part of the B complex. This has been incredible, effective. I love this because I didn't know about this literally just 10 years, like 10 years ago. And most practitioners still don't understand this. Part of the B complex, the full B complex, B vitamins typically create what's called vasoconstriction. They tighten things up so they can take, they literally will, you know, like create a little bit of uh, like they can make your vessels actually, you know, like a little tighter and they're good for muscle and blood and nerve flow. Awesome. But there's a part of the B vitamins called vitamin G and that part of it is a vasodilator. It opens things up, lowers blood pressure. So I love this one. I use this all the time. I use it, especially if people have been under massive amounts of stress and they just want something to de-stress the body. That's very safe and very gentle. All it's doing is vasodilation. It's a yin. It's a part of the, the yin system, which is the rest and digest relaxation. So it called, we call it, it's called cataplex G. Safe and effective to use. Um, again, I'm not telling you to treat your blood pressure, but this creates a relaxed state, creates vasodilation as a coupling effect. It often will lower blood pressure. Remember, blood pressure is measured by how much pressures are inside the arterial wall. And if we open it up with the same amount of volume going through, your pressure goes down. So that's okay. a little, there's another one I usually pair with that. It's called Cardio Plus. Um, and both of those, I put on a pretty decent dosing. They're hundred percent natural. You don't need them with food or anything like that. Uh, usually I do three of them twice a day for both of those. Okay. Awesome. And we've added the links in the chat, um, for you guys to grab those if you, if you, um, want to. Okay. Next question. Um, well, I mean, I think we kind of answered this. Maybe we can um, just do it quickly because following on from talking about Epstein-Barr, we've got a question here. How does high viral load affect your overall health and how do we lessen it? High viral load, it, it would have, it depends on what virus you're talking about, but how do we lessen high viral load? We get stronger. We talked about things like zinc. Zinc will inhibit the viral load going from one cell to another. So when we think about viral loads, it's that it's the multiplying of, that virus wants to do one thing, jump to another, increasing the viral load within the body. So all of these health habits that we have, Karen, and, and for the you know listener who asked that question, think about getting stronger, think about getting healthier. Vitamin C, zinc, vitamin D, all of those. The, the D, D makes a strong out, like it makes it hard to get in. Zinc makes it hard to leapfrog. So by just having those, I know that sounds so insane because we could have done so much this year if, you know, the government literally just passed out copious amounts of, you know, zinc and vitamin D. One inhibits it from jumping, the other inhibits it from getting in. So yeah. it, it's simplifying it, but that's how it works. And then the vitamin C keeps everyone fighting. Like, so we, we could have 
done a lot of things, but that's one of the ways to keep the viral load. And again, I want to put sleep at the top here. When you sleep, you recover, rebuild, recover. You know, that's when we get stronger is when we sleep. So I'm going to keep putting sleep as a top priority here. Yeah, I love that. And if anybody wants to go back, we did a whole episode on sleep. Um, so you can go and check out on whatever your favorite podcast channel is. You can go and check out the um, sleep episode to learn more about how to sleep better and get better sleep, sleep quality. Um, okay, next question. Is it important to detox heavy metals if we had vaccines as a child? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So the vax. So listen. Let's let's even if we didn't say vaccines, um, but if we, but since we did, so listen. If you're about my age, most likely you've got somewhere between twelve and fifteen, twelve and sixteen uh, vaccines on the schedule. I'm fifty years old, fifty one. Um, if you're in your thirties, you've probably got closer to thirty, and if you're ten years old now, you're probably going to get closer to fifty vaccines. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute insanity. It doesn't like it doesn't add up to to good health progress. Should you do a heavy metal detox, or should should be concerned about? It? We all should be concerned about heavy metals. Period. Yeah. Because once they enter the body, very very difficult to get out. We have to have a very specific type of strategy to chelate those out and to bind those to get them out. You can do. You, there's a very effective. Um, there's a couple of ways you can test heavy metals, and that's where I would start. And the, the, one of the ways it's a 24 hour ur urine sample. Um, you can, it's an at home test you can send in. You can also do a uh, hair sample. So either way, and if you, if you want to do that, we can, we could send that out to you. Um, but heavy metal detoxing, you need, you need a pretty good strategy about it. Cause if you free up heavy metals out of the fat tissue where a lot of it is stored or into in some of the organs, once it circulates into the body, the challenge is if it, if it's free circulates and get up into the brain, that's worst case scenario. And that does happen. So we want to be able to chelate it or bind it to get it out of that body. And that's where having like healthy liver function and healthy bile, hopefully maybe you still have a gallbladder and the gallbladder can help that as well. But there's, there's, some, there's some specific strategies, but overall is heavy metal um, toxicity a real thing? Yes, it is. It very definitely is. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um. Okay, next question. Um, is 5G bad for you from your phone? Man. <laughs> yeah, so yes, listen, these are, these are, these are, yeah, yeah. And a 5G, 3G, 4G, 1G, all the Gs, like except cataplex G or vitamin G. So, and here's why. Listen, we have frequencies going through our brain. We're an electrical, we're an electrical conduit. Anyone who wants to interfere, like just ignore that this is taking place. It's just, they don't understand the body. It's, it's an electrical conduit. So if you put an electri another electrical source there, you're going to have electricity taking and coming away, like, you know, taking from your body in that in the higher density areas, like our brain has much more electrical currents going on. That's the most significant. And then we put these phones to our brains. So yeah, it's like, I think we would be silly to think that we can just keep polluting the airwaves and that the things that are in between it, us that are shooting literally right through our brains. It's, it's regardless to so listen, logic is fast. Science is slow. Yeah. So okay? true. And for everyone listening, and this will help you save a lot of time wasting arguments about science. I love science. Logic is fast. Science is slow, like deathly slow, literally deathly slow. A lot of times people have to die to figure out the science. So by the time we figure out the effects of all the 5G and the science really comes out, you still got to use logic here. It's an electrical current going through the body. So yes, the good news is there's a lot of, Karen, there's a lot. And I think we, we sh and I, I keep saying this, but we should probably do a show on different EMF modalities out there. We have, kept, my wife and I, we have a, a mat. You lie down like you sleep on it and it's a grounding mat. You know, there's things you can put on your phone. There's things you can put in your house. You can shut off your, you know, your, your uh, Wi-Fi on your phone at night. So it's not, it's not circulating. There's so many things you can do and it would make sense that we do it. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, next question. Do you have any advice for osteoporosis? The prescribed medications have tremendous side effects. I'm only 58 and have already broken my wrist. Okay, 58 broken wrist. So you're young and only broken wrist. It's not the most typical place that you would see osteoporosis show up. 
in terms of a fracture. Um, but I'll, I'll take you into word and, and have someone say you've been diagnosed somehow and you've seen multiple areas in your body that there is um, lesser bone density. The answer is yes. So the way we want to approach osteoporosis is from a nutritional perspective and not just calcium. And I'll get to that in just a moment. First things first, we got to clean up the gut. We got to get a really good microbiome going. So all of the things you've heard me talk about in, in the past, lowering carbohydrates, using intermittent fasting, super important if you have low bo bone density, because we want to get it so your body can absorb. One, you got to put them in, but we got to make sure you can absorb the micronutrients that help make bone. And we use a very specific, I use a very specific protocol in my office. One, to feed the bone. Two is to make sure that we have the herbs that help the system. Remember herbs? help the systems and glands function at a higher level. Vitamins and minerals feed. So I use one feeder, it's called Biost. Uh, I guess I'll just kind of rip them off here. One's called Biost and it's, it's significant in terms of feeding the actual gland. It's very, very intelligent. Let me tell you how intelligent this is. So our bone health really comes down to a couple of things. It comes down to, believe it or not, our lungs and our ability to just absorb and like you have good oxygen within the system. It has a lot to do with your adrenal glands and how much stress and how much your adrenals can, can kind of deal with, you know, you know, the course of life. It has to do with your liver being able to detox and absorb nutrients. And then and also, have, of course, it has to do with your gut being able to feed your body. So this one called Biost covers all of those. Then I use something called Calma Plus means nothing to the average, but that's the name of the product I use. That helps create the proper pH. So your body has also the, the proper calcium magnesium balance so we can absorb it. And then I use another supplements, a couple supplements. But listen, if you have legit osteoporosis, you got to play catch up. Um, we have another one it's called Calcifood, the little yummy wafers. You chew them. It's a super, super, super bioavailable. This is the key when it comes to calcium. You can actually make your osteoporosis worse sometimes with the wrong type of calcium. But I use something called calcium food and they're wafers and you essentially just eat them a couple times a day. They make your, your calcium super available, super high cruciferous vegetable diet, though it's your best sources of calcium, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale. And then the herbal product they use, it's a combination product called bone complex. And I've had really good success with that. Um, and then you stay on a steady, steady, but in, in order here, diet first, the gut's got to get healthy. You literally start your gut, your bone health is really starts in the gut. Okay. Awesome. And we've listed out all those. We've added the link to all those products in the chat too, so that um, you guys can grab those. Um, okay. Next question. Um, okay. Um, I have someone who's tested positive for extremely high levels of herpes type one. I have been so curious as how that high viral load might play into his health overall post cancer, et cetera. So that okay. kind of feeds into what we talked about before, but can we go into herpes virus a little bit more? That's a different one. So herpes virus, most people think of it almost like, <clears throat> it's like the kissing virus. And, and you can have herpes one and herpes two, and there's, a, there's more herpes now at this point herpes simplex virus, the HSV, it is a stealth pathogen. Um, and that is, so if you, again, we have, if you have cold sores, you know, that'd be like type one on your mouth, I believe, and type two is on your genitals. Um, it might be flipped around, I don't know. But either way, it's, a, it's the same virus, the same approach we have toward it. So if I heard that co correctly, it was how could that affect post-cancer? So listen, I'm going to go as far as saying this, that I think that self pathogens play a massive role in getting cancer. Mm. Remember, all they want to do is take over cells. They want to wreak havoc through the course of the body. And when they take over a cell, that is a lesser, it's a weaker cell at this point. And that's why things like fasting can work so good when it comes to, you know, down the leg, the viral loads, fasting can be very effective. You got to do it very efficiently or very intelligently, not to put too much stress in the body. But in a scenario like this with being post cancer, you know, again, gut health, massive, 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 massive inflammatory markers got to come down. If herpes simplex, just think this is a self pathogen. Don't think too much be more than that. And yes, you got to go after it. Have to, there's not an option here because cancer cells, 
different mechanism by which they do it. They're opportunistic cells as well. They literally want to gang up on other cells, grab that cell, kill it off and make it into a cancer cell. Those cells, they are again, those are mutant cells now. I guess that's what you call them, meaning that they are no longer as strong as the original. So they're weaker. So we can kill them off and we can eliminate those out of the body, the cancer cells. The herpes simplex, we really all around well being. So, like chiropractic adjustments, phenomenal for especially upper cervical stuff, keep taking tension off of the actual spinal column. So, to answer that question, yes, same protocol. It's a stealth pathogen protocol. Sleep is absolutely important and critical here. Keeping the body clean. If you've had cancer, we've all technically have cancer. Karen, I know it sounds crazy, but we've all, we, we roll through it. If you've dealt with a fair amount of it before, know that those cells, there's still some that exist in your body. Even if you kill them off, even if they're non-detectable, even if you cut them out, what caused them to get there still exists. Go after the self pathogens, definitely. Okay. Awesome. All right. Next, um, next question. I'm a sedentary 75 year old. During COVID isolation, I lost all the weight I wanted to. Wouldn't mind a pound or two more, but not essential. Should I keep trying intermittent fasting? At the moment, I do eight to 16. Doesn't always work. And I try to fast one day, full day a month. Do I stick to the same calories and macros, but go back to three days, three meals a day or continue intermittent fasting? Okay, I don't know if I followed that whole thing, but I'll say this. If you're in your 70s and you're still practicing health, high five, boom. Yeah. Love it because a lot of people, unfortunately, think that they can't get healthy as they yes. age. They absolutely positively can. I've got an entire clinic full of them. So power to you. And yes, I love the question. And I think what you're saying is, should you continue on with this intermittent fasting? Yes. And I bet that it's going to come mostly natural for you. As we age, oftentimes we want to eat less and it's okay. You don't need as much fuel as you once did in your life. So be perfectly comfortable. If I caught it, Karen, there was something about losing some weight. Yeah, she's lost some weight, but wouldn't mind a, a couple of pounds extra. Okay. Um, I don't know if that means if she wanted to put the weight back on. No, don't. No, she would. Yeah, I think she wouldn't mind losing. Yeah, I think it's losing more. So if, if, for anyone out there, if you lose a bunch of weight and you're healthy, you're fit, you're strong, you know, you can functionally move your body. Don't put the weight back on. You don't need it. If you want to lose a couple extra pounds, I love the idea of 16-8. That's a, that's a phenomenal schedule. And then a couple of days a week have, you know, just kind of just eliminate the fasting and go into more of a feast, you know, go out with your family, whatever, have a breakfast early. Perfect. Keep that natural ebb and flow. Keep that diet variation going. Um, the once a month, 24-hour fast, hallelujah. Like, you're killing it. Like, yes, yes, and yes. Just keep doing that. Don't worry about the calories and the macros and macros. Don't. That'll drive you crazy. Like, I don't count them, right? So you don't want to make sure you're listening to your body and you feel hungry, you eat. Never eat if you're not hungry. And when you feel full, stop eating. If you're hungry again, eat. Like, we're overthinking it. Now, that's easier said than done when you're eating clean. If you're not eating clean, you go on a, like a wicked roller coaster and you can't figure out if you're hormonally imbalanced or you're hungry or what it is. So just if from what I heard there, yes, yeah, stay with the 16 hours, in the 16, eight, don't concern yourself too much with the micro macros. Um, low carb is always a nice way to go about things. No sugar, obviously, uh, once a month, 24 hour. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. Um Okay. I mean, I also love this that you brought up, like, let's get getting healthy, no matter <laughs> what the age is. My, my grandmother is about to turn 98 and she's always like finding new, she's like, Oh, can you get me this supplement? I read that it's going to be really good for this. And she's trying new things and going to the physio to do new exercises for a new hip. And just, it's so inspiring to keep, you know, keep leveling up even at 98. Right. I got, I got a shout out to my father-in-law. So this past weekend, we worked for five days straight. We, so we, um, I guess it's too much personal information, but anyway, so we, we have, my wife and I have bought this little investment property. We're getting ready to rent down. We had to build this big old fence and my father-in-law just crushed it. 70, yeah. 80 years old. Like he turn, I think he turns 80 later this week out there just working, lifting boards, cutting things, mind sharp, body strong. Like that's it. Like 
you know, if I grow up and do that when I'm older, like absolutely power to you. And, and you know, and that activity keeps us going that that's so do never, never let age be an excuse to, to like, throw the, you know, lay down the sword, just keep it rolling. You know, I would much rather like, I don't know, break down doing something and break down sitting on my couch. So literally my, it. yeah. So shout out to Mike James. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, okay. Uh, next question here. Um, is the virus that causes strep throat a stealth path pathogen? So interesting that, so strep throat often like ties into that mono category. So it like, it, it can, it strep by itself is not, a, is not what we consider a self pathogen <clears throat> yet. Here's, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing that I, that I think is important for me to help everyone understand by having these underlying self pathogens, they make your body more vulnerable for everything. And so yeah. The way that you respond to things, how often you get strep, you know, strep, uh, strep pneumonia, how often you, you get, you know, like your, your adrenals get toast, how often, you know, you get hormonal imbalances. These go back to how hard your body's already working internally. And that's where those self pathogens play such, such, they're playing a bigger role than we collectively really understand. Yeah. Um, okay. Next question. I'm suffering from burning mouth at the moment and doctors can't tell me why treating me with antibiotics for oral thrush. Okay. They can't tell me why my mouth is burning while they're treating me with antibiotics for oral thrush. Okay. So there's two parts to this. Um, if I'm here in this, our listener right here, they have oral thrush, which means there's a microbiome issue going on with your gut. Um, you get a, a bit of a candida. So immediately carbs and sugar got to go immediately. No, no, nothing, nothing. This is, this is time for it to shut down. The, the burning is an issue. This can be tricky, but ultimately what will happen if massive deficiencies taking place, sometimes it's just a B deficiency, vitamin B. Sometimes it's a zinc deficiency, but usually it's a B vitamin deficiency, but this goes all the way back to the gut because your body literally is not absorbing them. So I've seen this in a couple of different scenarios. So, and again, there's often, <laughs> there's often a pathogen that is really beating up the gut. And now the microbiome is completely out of balance. So for this individual, this is probably a scenario where the antibody, antibiotics, unfortunately, um, you might get some temporary relief here. My experience tells me that those antibiotics will make that thrush in the microbiome in the gut even more imbalanced because it literally is going to kill off some of your microbiome. Maybe it works out where it kills off the thrush and the bad bacteria as well, but usually you're left naked and it just repeats itself and sometimes even worse. So I, I think Karen, in this scenario, that my best answer is to get yourself the practitioner, someone that does functional nutrition, functional medicine, like myself, um, lay the cards out and get to work. Fixable. Yeah. Burning yeah. out fun anyone's ever had it i've had some you know clients over the years who've had this um very very uncomfortable it's it, if it's a food allergy usually you know which one it is but usually it's a deficiency literally on a, on a cellular level your body's no longer absorbing your b vitamins you could have a, a gene issue with the mthfr um but that's fixable as well so um probably again like you get yourself with a good practitioner yeah and i think um what you said there, like, well, I mean, if you can get yourself with a good practitioner who'll actually go through the, the different pieces, everything kind of is fixable or at least everything you can do something for. You know, I think a lot of us go to doctors that just literally say there is nothing you can do for this. And there's probably always something you can do, even if that is just getting your own system stronger, boosting your own immune system to be able to fight some of this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, Next question. Would a group B strep be the result of Epstein-Barr virus? My body tends to be holding on to GBS. Also thinking about it being from my root canal. Okay, well, answer like you certainly can. So the big thing to understand about the stealth pathogens and Epstein-Barr is one of them, that as we have those in our body, the way that your body is gonna to respond to everything else 
it, it's going to be determined by the by the self pathogen. So yes, if you're that's another one of the classics. And if you're chronically getting things, you're chronically getting the strep, you're chronically getting you know the cold, the flu, you got a pathogen. You get a pathogen that in every little corner, every corner you take, a little bit happens here. You get beat down a little bit. You don't get, or you travel, your body gets overwhelmed. All of these little things are starting to add up. And then it's very difficult for you to get strong again, no matter what, you know, medication you take or anything like that. So again, same thing. If you're dealing with, and you're kind of chronically getting these things over and over again, could it be that you have a bacteria stuck in your, you know, from, did I hear a root canal? Yeah. Uh, yes, there's a, certainly a possibility of that doing what I'm talking about. That protocol, by the way, I didn't even mention this. The staff, the, the, the stealth pathogen protocol that I use, the critter ritter, it's, uh, it's nicknamed the critter. <laughs> um, that, so it's addressing bacteria as well, because okay. often the, the viruses lead way to bacteria. Like it does that with the gut back, the gut microbiome all the time. So again, so many of these things, it can be tied back to a different pathogen in the bacteria. Now again, so maybe you never address the self pathogens, but you get so healthy in the other category, you can do pretty good, but it'd be that next layer. If you did that, it would just make this part easier. Um, a couple of questions about your protocol. Does the stealth pathogen protocol uh, address parasites as well? Yes, it does. Yeah, we use some, some phenomenal things. Artemisinin's in there, sweet wormwood is in there. There's sarsaparilla, which is a natural depurative, depurative, which means it clears out. So the answer is yes. Because a lot of a lot of a lot of these stuff past them, they're parasites. And under yeah. a microscope, Karen, you do not want to see these dudes. Some of them have little faces. Yeah. It's oh like yeah. No thanks. Um, the other question about your protocol with the, the protocol is if we can't rid the virus, then do we do this protocol more than once? Like if you do the first three months, then what? It's, it's a great question, depending on the individual. So let's just say someone comes to me and they're doing pretty healthy and they say, man, this sounds like a really good strategy for me just leveling up once a year, twice a year. Fantastic. Yet I will tell you that I have some people that are put on three months, take a 30 day break and do it again. And then we may do it again after that. It's really because a lot of them have been there for decades. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give an example, Karen. When someone says, man, I had food poisoning that time when I went to Mexico, it was so bad. They have deep-seated parasites. They have deep-seated viruses. That battle that when they were in college, they were in high school, that battle they had with mono and they were in bed for a week and they lost 20 pounds or love that, they've got deep-seated viruses. Those peeps probably have to do it. Now, what, is ha what happens with it? And then we see hormone imbalance. We see different types of acne. We see the really robust allergies in different seasons. We just see all this stuff, even though they might have, you know, they might be gluten free. They, you know, like, and all those things do help and they're all important. So don't stop doing them. All of them help. And if we have some of these pathogens, um, it, just, it just takes that, the whole game to another level. And I tell you, especially where we're headed, like, this year, and, I, and I've said this from, you know, literally a year ago in March, this exposed the fact that we collectively are not healthy. Yeah. We're not healthy. Yeah. So when we're now it is time to take different strategies and literally level ourselves up. So I like, I'm super jazzed that we have this tool and it's been effective and I've been able to do it for myself the last couple of years and we see the results. So, um, so yeah. Awesome. Gotta go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I've got, a, we've got a long question for you here. All right. All right. I'm gonna my 80, yes. <laughs> my 85 year old mom has had many months of diarrhea in the middle of the night, around two to 5 AM for several days a week. I suggested she take some organic apple cider vinegar in water each day. And this has actually helped a lot to where the diarrhea only happens once every couple of weeks, but still at the same time in the middle of the night. I've encouraged her to wean off the Omeprozole, maybe? O-M-E-P-R-O-Z-O-L-E, -E, that she's been on for years. She's tried but can't due to extreme burning in her throat. Do you have any idea what maybe causes the diarrhea to happen only at night and any suggestions you have for her? 
Okay. A lot, lot there without knowing the full patient history. So I'll, I'll go with what I do have because it's happened between two and five at night. We know that this is for the most part, a liver borne issue. The liver is trying to detox. And when it goes to detox, it's, there's not enough adequate bile, Karen, and therefore it goes right through the body. So bile is what binds things up and brings it through the intestines adequately. So in this scenario, where there's this chronic diarrhea taking place when the body is ready for detox, which is usually between one and three, two and four o'clock a.m., you know, maybe it's pushing a little bit to five. That tells me that that's where the issue is. So if I was to support, as crazy as it sounds, I would start with two things. One, I would, I, and I love the fact that they recommended apple cider vinegar. It helps acidify the gut. You're killing off stuff. You're helping killing and rid off of bad guys. So, so good job on that. I would probably help with a little bit of milk thistle here, which would be good. I would support the gallbladder if that still exists. Hopefully it does. With something called a little AF beta food. It's a beet product. Very gentle, very easy. It also helps start to get these super high in alkalamides. So it would really help bring some nutrients back into the body. That's my biggest concern right now is a 85 year old with high di you know, chronic diarrhea is lack of nutrition because you're not holding and absorbing anything. So I'd probably try to get it. You know, if I was giving her a multivitamin or something, what we call Catalin, um, I take that back. I'm going to go one step a little bit different here. Same two first things, milk thistle, and I would use the, um, the AF beta food. In this scenario, I would also use something called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is essentially like a, uh, it is, it's, it's like nature's blood. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like nature's blood. It's like plant blood. And it has all the vitamins and nutrients. They pump super, super high absorbable. They will absorb in the gut. Won't even need to get all the way into the intestines. That's the, it's really super green. This will also help heal if there's anything like ulcerative in the gut, it'll start to heal that process and start to make her feel better. I would start there and then no doubt about it in this scenario. If your grandma is having chronic diarrhea, you know, between two and five every single night, you got to go get her to a doctor, someone that's going to work on helping her body absorb nutrients because this, this can lead into a significant nutrient deficiency. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Um. Okay, awesome. Uh, next question, is CSCFS an autoimmune condition? Is that chronic fatigue syndrome? CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome, yes. Um, is it an autoimmune? No, not necessarily. It is more of a description of, of when you go into the doctor, I'm, I'm in chronically fatigued forever. So say, so well, you have chronic fatigue syndrome. And it really you know, accompanies a couple of different things. And usually it's a combination of things that take place with the body. So really it's a label, um, but that's really not an autoimmune condition by itself. Um, it's, it's nothing anybody wants to tell you that. Uh, you get wired and tired. You're too tired to sleep. Um, it's really, really tough. And, but in, in the same time, Karen, get with somebody. I know you're probably exhausted. If, if this is you, you know, the person to ask if this is you, I know you're probably exhausted your capacity to follow instructions and meal plans and all that stuff is very, very limited. So get with some a practitioner who's going to hear you out, listen to things. And in the very beginning, boost you up a little bit, get you stronger. There's a path you got to do after that to heal the body. But there's also some things we can do quickly with things like your adrenal glands and different vitamins to give you enough boost to make you feel human enough to be able to follow certain protocols. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. Next question, uh, is about being overweight with visceral fat. So I am in my seventies healthy, except for mild occasional asthma. And I'm slim except for my belly area, which has gradually added maybe five to eight pounds to my weight. I've heard that exercise will not get rid of that type of fat. What do you recommend for reducing my belly, especially because of the COVID virus risk? you talked about okay and again high five yeah <laughs> love my 70 year old plus peeps who are out there just leveling it up raising the bar making everyone else look silly for whining about their health i love it uh-huh boom yeah nice uh that. all right so you know the, the simple answer to this is this so if the so visceral fat just so we know the visceral fat is that fat you got wrapped around the organs visceral that's that's what that really means you're probably talking about some of the fat hanging around your belly around your waist side 
And the best way we can reduce that and say, listen, sometimes, just remember your fat cells collect toxins. That's, they collect toxic, toxins in excess. But the best way to reduce some belly fat is simply low carb, low sugar. It is the number one way. That being said, if we are coping with a fair amount of stress, that's what's putting it on. So if we have a lot of cortisol, which is our stress hormone, that is where it goes right to the midsection, especially for my ladies. So we want to reduce that. So how do you, this is crazy, Karen. Listen, you can sleep weight off. That's not a myth. You can sleep weight off because you reduce the impact of, or how much cortisol you're producing. So make sure you're well rested. If, if you are under stress, you support your adrenal glands. So make sure they stay vibrant and they're not stealing your, your, your sex hormones. Get your carbohydrates down. Do some intermittent fasting. If you've never done it before, start at least 12 hours, but try to get pretty comfortable between 14 and 16 hours. And other than that, that's your best method. Trying to, you know, like do a, you know, gazillion sit-ups doesn't really work, but you know, the summer, the night, you know, the weather's getting better. If you're down here in Florida, get outside, sweat it out, sweat it out a little bit. Always helpful. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Okay. Um, next question is what would be a natural anti-inflammatory product or medicine you recommend? So we'll take two routes on that. Um, one of the ones that I like is, and, and, and as much as I want to say anti-inflammatory, I want to think inflammation facilitation. Sounds like big. So we want, we don't want to shut off inflammation because inflammation is part of what the body uses to heal itself, but we want to be able to facilitate that properly. So there's two things, they have different mechanisms. One, fish oils. Fantastic. Absolutely. Especially for the brain. Absolutely fantastic. Um, my, old, my old school favorite is cod liver oil because it does have vitamin A and vitamin D in it. So I uh, use two capsules twice a day if, if they use the brand that I use, which is uh, from Standard Process. Um, I, I love that brand. And then also the next, which is the Kingpin, the number one out there is something called Turmeric Forte, hands down, the best product on the market right now for facilitating inflammation and pain relief. So it's, it's a very special blended turmeric. So it's a little bit different, especially therapeutically than, than most others. It's bound with a little fenugreek, which is the only one in, literally in the world, I think, that's bound that way. And what that means, it'll uptake into the tissues better, over 300 times better. And that's, Karen, what we want. Also, it crosses the blood-brain barrier so it can reduce blood inflammation. So it's cod liver oil and turmeric. Those are my two favorite things. Then, of course, we're going right back to the top here. You sleep, better you sleep, less inflammation you have because you get to heal. If you don't get to heal, you'll keep producing inflammation. This came up my office today. Second part is this. If you're eating carbs and sugar and you're about my age, 50, 51 years, you feel every year, okay? If you, if you got a bad diet, man, you feel every bit of your age. If you clean your body up, and we you literally go like low, no carb and getting all the sugar out of your body. You're eating cruciferous vegetables every day. And you're, just, you're living a good, clean life. Your pain starts going away. Yeah, love that. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, that's, uh, that's probably about all we have time for today. We've gotten some awesome questions. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for sending in all your questions. Um, I think people have really enjoyed it. Uh, let us know in the chat if you have, uh, because you definitely, you've definitely uh, sent us lots of things to try to stump Dr. Bart. So thank you for that. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. That blew by fast. I feel like I, feel I know like, it does. Yeah. I don't think I get too, too stumped too much. Then maybe a little bit. Uh, but no, you did. You did. <laughs> you did really good. Let's move on to the last question. Then we still need to do the last question. Um, so out of what we've talked about tonight, what is one action that all our listeners can take to move them towards their goal of becoming superhuman? Well, here's, I, I don't even know it's one action, but I'm going to give kind of like a, a, a thought process here. So I had this conversation with a, with a guy who came in today. He's in, the, he's in the category of what I call the knuckleheads. Most guys are. We don't do anything until like it really gets bad. So the, and this is what I said to him. I said, what if there was a gun to your head? I know that sounds, it's an often awful vision, but it's amazing what happens when we have to do something. We are yeah. absolutely like incredible with our potential and what we have available for us and everything sitting at our fingertips. So I would say to everyone, act as if when it comes to your health, Act as if there's a gun to your health and do all those things that you were putting like, I'm kind of doing it well. I'm, I'm kind of cutting my carbs out. I'm, I'm drinking a little less alcohol just when I run out of beer, like that kind of stuff. 
Like, what if there was a gun to your head and you had that poor, that moment? And a lot of our listeners understand when I say that moment where you get that that diagnosis. Yeah. You had that moment where someone passes away. You have a, a near life experience. What would you do then? Because that's when it changes. If you could apply that now, that would be like that's leveling up. That's leveling up. Yeah, love it. Awesome. Well, thanks again uh, for another awesome show. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll be back same time next week uh, for another episode of the Health Made Simple Show. Awesome. And again, thank you guys for tuning in and everyone on Facebook. Appreciate that you're here, here on Zoom. Love you guys. It's awesome. Keep doing your thing. And as usual, we're going to keep, you know, leveling up, making sure we take deliberate action for our mind, our body, overall wellness. And y'all be awesome.